Mark Selby on the break. And that's a pretty good one. It's been one of the most noticeable things, actually, when he played his first individual event for 17 years was how good the break was, especially early on in the tournament. He made it through to the semi-finals. His break was incredible. Without huge power, he's just getting an amazing explosion, getting through the ball really well and was getting great splits on repeat. Yeah, it's almost... And there'll be plenty of people who watched him play at the last Pro Series who play pool to a really good level and play pool a lot. Probably watch Mark Swan back in and just think, oh, he can't believe you make this game look so easy. Yeah, it was incredible, actually. You, you, you felt he was going to go through and, and win the event. He was playing so well, but knocked out the high, at the semi-final stage by Arf and Dad. Interestingly, he did actually play Gareth Potts in that tournament as well. Good match between those two. Obviously, Mark ended up winning it. But yeah, the level that he played at, considering, it was amazing. It really was. If you are watching us for the first time with the Pairs Cup, we've got four pairs here tonight. All will play each other in a round-robin format. Top of the group come the end of the night. We'll go through two points for a win. None for a loss, one for a draw. And the draw is in play because we have a match clock, which is 20 minutes long for each match, or a race to four, whichever one comes first. Playing international eight ball rules. Pick your gutter set, pot your balls, pot the eight ball. Gareth and Mark going through reds very nicely. Looks like a good angle, just a slide to the right hand side. It depends how wide it throws here. If the, two, if the yellows in the middle of the table are in play here, then this could be tough, but you can see where he's trying to get to. Yeah, the grimace on the face tells us this could be quite close to the yellow. How straight is he? Yeah, just gets it. He's had to judge that really well because the harder you play that, the wider the cue ball throws. It's all about really power control more than anything else, that shot. Yeah, and there'll be a lot of people sort of watching it going, well, Gareth's been on the table all weekend long because if you don't know, he came through the Players' Championship this weekend in this venue. But the cloth was changed today. In fact, there was a, a huge operation by the Ultimate Pool team and brand new cloth, cushions have been sorted, everything's been looked at, so it's completely fresh conditions, so there'll be no advantage for Gareth having been the one out there, other than good match practice. Yeah, he'll be sharp. That's be sharp, sure. yeah. That was an excellent shot from Mark, just to hit that gap. Yeah, it's been a very tidy clearance, hasn't it? And the eight ball, don't think it goes bottom right, it doesn't, so he's going to have to drop this in. This is tough. Dead weight. Excellent. Potted it thick as well, which holds the cue ball up. If he pots that thin, the cue ball will go past the eight ball there in terms of further up the table, making it a trickier one for, for Mark. Yeah, brilliant. Got to start. Yeah, fantastic. And, you know, you are dealing with two of the best players in the world here. Not just in terms of the queuists, but we saw it. Mark is a former world pool champion back in 2006 before he you know, went and became one of the greatest of all time in snooker. And with that sort of upbringing, it's not really left him. No, not at all. You know, really are two of the greatest of all time, no doubt about it focused on their opponents then at the table. Dave McNamara with a cracking break and he's actually been a little unfortunate here. When you see the split, you'll see what I mean. Catches that absolutely plumb. I think the only thing he can do here is to go yellows and play yellow off yellow. But the yellows are not an easy out. So there's the yellow off the yellow. So the one on the right-hand side next to the red is the, the big problem ball. 
individual frame now, of course. So Mark Selby looks like it's his opponent. Deej will be hoping to keep him off the table. Yeah, best way to beat them. Okay, right, now he's into the visit. It's now about controlling yourself to have the, the breakout shot. The one nearest it looks like it's the easiest way of doing it, but you've still got to be quite precise to be, to be able to do that. I don't see a better way, unless he has the... I don't think he's quite straight enough on the one top left now to be able to do it. You'd, you'd ideally like to go into it from one of the ones at the top of the table, so you keep the other one there. Yeah, see how he's looking now? So that the one that's near it is your chance to be on that ball as well as the one you're moving. We were speaking to Deej yesterday and he was really looking forward tonight. First time I've actually seen him in the ultimate pool for a little while. Yeah, he's got his spells left here. Yeah. It looks a touch thin to me. He's really going to have to nip this, but he doesn't need to go into it with any pace. Just needs to get solid contact on the red. Just looks a shade on the thin side, but I'm sure it's doable. Just caught the red thin. That's actually a really good effort. He catches that, I mean, a quarter ball thicker, if that. He's perfect here. Just catches the cushion first. If he catches the red and cushion at the same time, he's absolutely plump. Yeah. Tough to trouble. see the way out here. I think his only option is the double. And he is a phenomenal doubler of a ball as Dave McNamara. He's going to need to be. What a shot that is. Oh, that's brilliant. What a shot that is. Dead weight. Queuing over a ball. Oh, that really is. He's going to have to hit this one well as well because he's going to need to really get into this to avoid the eight ball coming off one cushion. But that is brilliant. He's really going to have to hit this quite, quite soft and really allow the spin to grip. Beautiful. Punches it. Ah, oh, that's great from Dave McNamara. This is a really good clearance. What a start. That was absolutely fantastic from David. It really was. I mean, this double makes the finish, but... I mean, that really is fantastic. <laughs> That's such a good shot, isn't it? Yeah. He is fantastic at that. You know, we often associate great doublers as almost more experienced players. And, you know, the, the wily likes of Phil Harrison, Chris Melling, for example. But Deed, for his relatively young age in, in the pool world, is a phenomenal doubler. And he's got a really, really clever system. Yeah, to, to work it all out. I know he's done a bit with you regarding that. And yeah, and it, when he told me that, so if, you, if you've not heard, it was more. It's about kind of visualising another table next to it, and essentially trying to pop that ball into the the, the, the imaginary table that, that's next to it, and it kind of helps him find the line. And it's amazing how much that works for him. It's not something I'd heard before he told me that, but it's a system he uses, and it really works. Had a, a full weekend in the players' championships here on this table, and he'll be delighted for his first break tonight to be successful. Uh, someone who's almost got a reputation as a as a fantastic breaker with that sort of patented cue bend is that uh, quite a few times I've watched him recently. He's actually struggled a bit with the break in terms of. You know, a pot success. How was it this weekend for him? Well, I asked him, because I wasn't here the whole weekend, but I asked him straight away, how, how was the weekend? How'd you play? Good. How'd you break? It's like the first question you, you want to know when you're sort of talking to somebody. He said, I hit them really well all weekend. How were the results? Yeah, they were okay. So you could tell there was still some inconsistency there, but he was really happy with how he hit it. And that's all you can do, is hit them well.
it's an interesting one at the moment. It, it's something to keep an eye on for with Gareth and for the rest of the, the season and, and beyond is that one thing he's always been quite clear on is he ne he's never wanted to sort of mix the, the Q sports and something that we've not seen Mark Selby do either. But this is the first time in his whole career he's ever mixed Q sports. He's now back fully fully playing Chinese eight ball. So for him, this is you know a new experience and something he's having to figure out how to sort of chop and change games. And obviously very small sample size, but so far so good for him. Pretty handy on the snooker table, as we well, saw he's recently. Very on the, handy uh, on the snooker table. On the Stephen Hendry YouTube channel. Yeah, I love the way he's got about this, though. Yeah, pot that thick to get the, the cannon on the yellow right. If he pots that centre pocket, he can catch the yellow thin and end up not on this red, but played perfectly. The patterns will always be there. Matt Sharp and looking very well. Pat Ranjin with plenty of the Potts and Selby family. If you didn't know, these two related brothers in law and fierce friends as well. It is really a, a family affair tonight. The nippers are in and they'll be the first to receive the high fives. Should they, uh, should they get a victory, which was the case last year. And this is how tough this sport can be and this format can be. Here we are. We are 11 and a half minutes in. And we're yet to see Gareth play a shot. Gareth Higgins, that is, play a shot. Yeah. It's, it's a tough one. He has to be ready and prepared. OK, he's going to play his first shot in the match right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough, isn't it? Yeah, welcome to big school. Could break this right down the middle of that cue ball. Yeah, they just hit two tonight, and he's absolutely flushed them both. A little cannon here. Be careful not to stick on the yellow. Yeah, got the cannon nice. It's interesting, actually, speaking to Gaz. Higgins, that is, before we got going tonight. And, you know, he mentioned he's, he's barely picked his queue up since January, which is incredibly unlike him. Oh, he's normally, a, you know, plays a lot. Yeah. Not necessarily practices a lot, he plays a lot. A lot of matches, a lot of tournaments. So it's rare for him. Yeah, he's obviously had a lot going on off the table, as people often do. But great to see him back playing. Always a player I've really enjoyed watching. Fantastic shot maker. It's always amazed me and impressed me with with, with Gaz is his belief. Huge belief in what he's trying to do out there. Very confident player. Believes he can mix it with the best and, and normally does. Question for me, when are they going to go down for the one at the bottom? Is that their last ball or are they getting down there earlier than that? Yeah, quite like it's either next or it's last for me. Either connecting to the one just below the break line or the eight ball. If they play on the one below the break line now, you've got to get good on it. A straight's fine, so I think the red does go top left. Also goes top right, the one above the, the break line that is. So you, you've got options, just make your decision. Needs a bounce. Needs a bounce. In the end, actually, they've been they've got the benefit of, of not getting that bounce because he's a long way short here. Mm. He's at least a foot short of where he was trying to get to. And the yellow, I thought it was going to snooker them. And actually, they've ended up short of being snookered by it. Yeah. They're so short, they're actually on a shot. Not an easy shot, but he, no. they're, they're happy to have one. Held it well. Didn't want the eight ball cannon. Are they on this red? I think yeah. so. Yeah, they're OK here. They're not going to get right behind the eight ball, but they've got room to play into here. Yeah. It was a good recovery pot. Got away with one a bit. Oh, has he hit it? Oh, perfect. They'll be pleased. The cloth has just been replaced. <laughs> playing a little bit, probably a little bit quicker than it has been, and it just drops in. So this for all square. In it goes. 
Very tidily done as we are going to tick down to the five minute mark, which is the 15 second shot clock zone. 30 seconds a shot for the first 15 minutes of the 20 minute match. And 15 seconds a shot we go. What a standard we've seen to start tonight. All four frames. Yeah, it's been good. Clearances off the break and both those clearances on the Higgins McNamara side have been high quality. They've not been easy, far from it, in fact. And it's also, it just feels a little bit more impressive when you're doing it in response as well. Yeah. Especially if, you know, you are Dave McNamara and Gareth Higgins here, where you are the underdogs and, you know, you you could easily sort of be a bit intimidated by Gareth Potts and Mark Selby coming out and playing as well as they have, but they have given absolutely as good as they've got here. Also, you can't help but feel that they they know that the, you know, Potts and Selby are the, the guys to beat here and this is the big scalp they need if they want a chance to go through. So it's a, everything feels like it rides on this match for them. Cue ball. Oh, in the end, touch of fortune for Mark Selby. Yeah, he's uh, might have been a little way away from the game, but he's, he's not forgotten the old hand up of apology for a little bit of run off the break. I think if that yellow drops off the break direct, then the cue ball follows it in. The fact yeah. it rattled, kept the cue ball on the table. So Mark's going to get the chance, and he's got one problem red. The rest are wide open. Does he have the angle straight away? Pop this in the top cushion and go into it. He's looking at all the ways around. And it's all at 15 seconds a shot, of course, which we just ticked into for the first time. Yeah, we've had quite a few snooker players on at this stage. And quite a few of them don't really bulk at 15 seconds a shot. I think a fair few snooker fans will sniff at the accusation that Mark Selby can play at 15 seconds a shot. Oh, what a shot that is. Oh, he's been a bit unlucky, has he? He has, the, but there is just enough gap. I think he can still make this in the centre. If he sticks right on it, he's got no shot. Big shot required here. It's there. Brilliant. What a part. Yellow's just gone awkward. I don't know whether he would have needed that bottom left, but that yellow, the, the red below the eight ball, is slightly awkward for him here. It depends where, if he can get on the next red in in a nice way, just to drop it in. Yeah, just nip that one. So now he's got an angle where he can just come below it, and the bottom left corner is not required at all. So it's not really an issue. Could have done with just stopping a couple of rolls short there. Drop it in and take the eight ball in the opposite corner. Now, this isn't a nice angle. Doesn't want to slide by it. Just kills it in. <laughs> oh, wow. If, it, if the bottom left hand corner, I said it wasn't going to be a problem. If that was open, he could have just drifted past the eight ball there. This does sneak in top left. Oh, it Center. sneaked into the middle. It didn't sneak in top left. Well, big moment in the match. Huge moment in the match. That could be a big moment in the night as well. That was incredibly thin. Yeah, definitely on. Definitely on. He didn't quite get that as thin as he could. But... Well, they're in trouble now because... Gaz Higgins has got a chance and a wide open chance to counter clear here and then they'll have the break as well. I think I just heard Deej say you've got your extension as well and for those who are used to playing maybe local league where any sort of chatter is a bannable offence. Not so in the Pairs Cup. There's full conversation encouraged between the two players. And personally I love that rule. It's a team game. The player in the chair should be able to help the player at the table. Whenever comparing 
in local league ball to this is sometimes comparing apples to oranges, but there's plenty of plenty of ways to compare the two. Obviously taking his time on these simply because it's to their advantage to run the clock down. It's absolutely what you've got to do. Look, only 36 seconds left, so it's only going to be a golden duck that will stop them from winning this match. Yeah, and players don't like doing it because they feel like a little bit of a lemon out there, but you do just have to... Got to do it. ...take your time. Job done from Gareth Higgins, and that should be job done for the pairing of Higgins and McNamara. Yeah, only a golden duck can save Potts and Selby, and that is so unlikely. McNamara is just not going to allow this to be anywhere near you. Normally in this situation, just take something off the break, guarantee control of the cue ball. Yeah, 12 seconds left. Just don't foul the break. That's the important thing here. There's no, people might be at home thinking, oh, just tap break, and you can't possibly pop the cue ball in the eight ball, but that would be a foul break, and it would allow Gareth and Mark to come to the table with an attempt to make a golden break, which is altogether much more likely. So you want a legal break here. Just don't break the cue ball. To be fair, we got the cue ball going a little bit towards the corner, but never with enough power to do any damage. And that's that, job done by Dave McNamara and Gareth Higgins, an excellent result for them.